radius and ulna short oblique shaft fractures, including radial neck fracture. In this exercise, the procedure for implanting the titanium elastic nail 10 will be demonstrated using both retrograde and antegrade techniques. Upon completion of this exercise, you should be able to describe unstable forearm fracture patterns, address the major problems of malalignment in the forearm, identify which forearm fractures are appropriate for operative and non-operative management, recognize the advantages and disadvantages of the different entry points, describe both distal radial approaches for ESIN and Perform the steps of the Essin technique for the radius and ulna. Clinical indications for the Essin include displaced fractures of both radius and ulna, displaced isolated fracture of either bone, some green stick and bowing fractures, Montegia lesion, open fractures and radial neck fractures. The clinical case shows a five-year-old patient with a complete forearm fracture, 22-D slash 4.1. Preoperative planning includes closed reduction, use of 2.5 millimeter elastic nail, functional postoperative treatment, and no plaster cast applied. Intraoperative documentation indicates antigrade and retrograde techniques were used, correct alignment of the fractures was achieved, and the nail tips are oriented correctly. The one month post operative x rays show good callus formation and light sport is permitted. The five month post operative x rays show full fracture consolidation with complete modeling of the cortex. As correct bone healing was achieved, the nails can be removed. Tip for nail removal, the bone looks like a bone again, meaning a clear sign for nail removal is when the bone has regained its healthy and natural appearance. The patient is positioned more on the lateral side of the operating table than in the supine position, with the affected arm placed on a radiolucent arm table. It is verified that the image intensifier is positioned to take intraoperative AP, lateral and axial fluoroscopy after each step of the procedure. Positioning the arm directly under the C-arm guarantees larger and better image intensification quality of the fracture site and reduces exposure time to radiation. However, care should be taken to avoid damaging the image intensifier with instruments. The nail diameters are roughly two-thirds of the medullary isthmus of each bone. To prevent malalignment, nails of the same diameter are used, ensuring that the opposing bending forces are equal. In pediatric forearm fractures, Nail diameters of 1.5, 2.0 and 2.5 millimeters are generally used. In this exercise, a 2.0 millimeter diameter nail will be used. The required instruments are the awl for 10. The sharp tip of the awl facilitates entry to the medullary canal. The pin wrench, 4.5 mm diameter. The inserter for 10. The inserter for 10 facilitates nail insertion and advancement in the medullary canal and the orientation of the nail tip in the medullary canal is marked on the instrument. The combined hammer for 10. The beveled impactor for 10. The beveled impactor for 10 provides controlled and precise end placement of the elastic nail by showing the specific depths of the holes at the tips of the corresponding impactors. It facilitates positioning and fixation of all sizes of end caps. The screwdriver shaft for end cap for 10. The extraction pliers for 10. 
The cutter for 10 allows precise and smooth cutting of nails of all diameters. It can be used close to the skin without damaging the soft tissue. The nail entry point for the retrograde technique on the radius is on a 45 degree plane between the dorsal volar and radial ulnar plane and one centimeter proximal to the growth plate. The nail entry point for the antegrade technique on the ulna is on the radial side of the proximal metaphysis and 1 to 1.5 cm distal to the apophyseal plate. Be aware that an entry point on the ulna side of the proximal ulna can cause a severe injury of the ulna nerve by directly damaging it or inducing compression of the nerve by the nail. A direct straight insertion of the nail through the olecranon must be avoided as this results in insufficient stability of the fracture. In the radius, a new alternative entry point is one centimeter proximal to the growth plate on the Lister's tubercle. The nail entry point for the retrograde technique on the ulna is on a 45 degree plane between the dorsal volar and ulna radial plane and one centimeter proximal to the growth plate. Both entry points of the ulna and radius are on the same level. In terms of the biomechanical nail properties, good contact of the nail with the inner side of the cortex is essential, particularly for long oblique, spiral or complex fractures, where a danger of shortening exists. Pre-bending the nails in these cases is highly recommended. To achieve a good three-point contact of the elastic nail in the radius, it is recommended to pre-bend the nail over the length of the bone three times the diameter of the medullary canal. The nails can be pre-bent either by hand, the pliers or the inserter. The tip of the nail is fixed in the pliers and the nail is contoured by hand. It is important to pre-contour the nail in the plane of the tip. Both nails must be contoured in the same way. Fixation should be performed on the radius first, as generally it is more difficult to reduce. There are two approaches for generating the distal radial insertion points. The old traditional approach with a distal radial insertion, which involves the risk of damage to the superficial branch of the radial nerve, and the dorsal approach over Lister's tubercle. Clinically, a longitudinal skin incision or a transverse incision along the skin line is preferred as they result in better scarring cosmetically. An open dissection is recommended to prevent tendon damage. The awl is inserted perpendicular to the bone and a central mark is made with oscillating movements. The awl is advanced into the metaphysis with full rotational movements. Once the awl has secured a purchase in the bone, it is lowered to an angle of 45 degrees in relation to the shaft axis and the bone is perforated at an upward angle. The entry point opening must be slightly larger than the selected nail diameter. When using end caps for the nails, the holes must correspond to the core diameter of the end cap. It is crucial not to penetrate the opposite cortex. The inserter is slid over the nail, ensuring that the nail tip and one of the inserter's bars are on the same plane. The radial nail is inserted manually with the inserter for 10 into the medullary canal with the nail tip at a right angle to the bone shaft.
the nail is rotated through 180 degrees with the inserter and the nail tip is aligned with the axis of the medullary canal. The nail is advanced up to the fracture site with oscillating movements. The radial nail tip is aligned with the medullary canal of the distal fragment. Then the nail is manually advanced with smooth oscillating movements until the nail tip reaches the proximal fragment. After indirect reduction, the nail is advanced as proximal as possible just before the radial head physis. The fracture is fixed and the inserter is removed. Opening of the medullary canal in the ulna. The awl is inserted perpendicular to the bone and a central mark is made with oscillating movements. Once the awl has secured a purchase in the bone, it is lowered to an angle of 45 degrees in relation to the shaft axis and the bone is perforated at an upward angle. It is crucial not to penetrate the opposite cortex. The ulna nail is manually inserted. The nail is rotated through 180 degrees and advanced up to the fracture site using the inserter for 10. The nail is advanced across the fracture line into the distal metaphysis. The fracture is fixed and the inserter is removed. The use of a hammer is not recommended since hammering may produce further fracture fragmentation or perforation of the cortex. The disadvantages of the antegrade technique are as follows. As the nails are entered distally and proximally, reduction may prove to be challenging as it is necessary to manipulate the nails simultaneously. The opposing position of the nails makes it difficult to perform intraoperative fluoroscopy. Due to the need of 180 degree intraoperative fluoroscopy, the arm must be regularly manipulated which may lead to reduction instability. Regardless of the chosen technique, radius retrograde, ulna anterograde or radius retrograde, ulna retrograde, both nail tips must be rotated towards the interosseous membrane for maximum spread. Once the nails are correctly positioned in the opposite metaphysis, the protruding nail ends are cut approximately one centimeter from the bone. The beveled impactor for 10 and the hammer are used to push the nails in both bones into their final position. At least 5 mm of the nail end must protrude beyond the cortex. It is crucial not to over-insert the nail. If the nails are over-inserted, the extraction pliers for 10 must be used to retract the nails. The use of small 10 end caps is recommended to provide additional stability in unstable fractures and has the additional advantage of preventing soft tissue and tendon irritation. The screwdriver shaft is inserted into the inserter and tightened. The end cap is mounted on the screwdriver shaft by aligning the D-flats, placed over the nail end and threaded clockwise into the bone at the entry site. The threaded portion of the end cap directed toward the bone must be fully inserted. 
no post-operative immobilization is required. Active motion can commence as soon as it is tolerated. If the patient experiences pain, an arm sling or dorsal splint can be used. The removal of the nails is usually recommended after four to six months, dependent on the fully circumferential complete bone modeling at the fracture site as verified with fluoroscopy. As bone healing varies from age to age, there is no recommendation for nail removal after a specific number of months. End caps are removed using the same instruments as for insertion. The extraction pliers and mallet are used to remove the implant. Axial blows are applied in the beginning of removal. The nail is loosened and removed manually using the pliers only. Fixation of the radial mid-shaft oblique fracture using Lister's tubercle approach on a distal radius. Clinically, a transverse skin incision is performed, taking into account the cosmetic and patient comfort aspects. After an atraumatic preparation of the Lister's tubercle by blunt dissection, the awl is placed directly on the descending part of the tubercle, one centimetre proximal to the distal radial physis. The awl is inserted perpendicular to the bone and a central mark is made with oscillating movements. Once the awl has secured a purchase in the bone, it is lowered to an angle of 45 degrees in relation to the shaft axis and the bone is perforated at an upward angle. The entry point opening must be slightly larger than the selected nail diameter. When using end caps for the nails, the holes must correspond to the core diameter of the end cap. The nail is inserted manually with the inserter for 10 into the medullary canal with the nail tip at a right angle to the bone shaft. The nail is manually advanced with smooth oscillating movements up to the fracture site. After reduction of the fracture is verified under fluoroscopy, the nail is advanced across the fracture line into the proximal metaphysis. The advantages of the retrograde technique are as follows. No change of the forearm position during reduction is needed. It is always possible to take the relevant fluoroscopic views. No change of the forearm position during nail insertion is required. For the retrograde technique, a 2 to 3 cm incision is made over the distal ulna, starting 3 cm proximal from the palpable ulna styloid. The awl is inserted perpendicular to the ulna and a central mark is made with oscillating movements. Once the awl has secured a purchase in the bone, it is lowered to an angle of 45 degrees in relation to the shaft axis and the bone is perforated at an upward angle. The entry point opening must be slightly larger than the selected nail diameter. It is crucial not to penetrate the opposite cortex. The nail is manually inserted and advanced up to the fracture site using the inserter for 10. The fracture is reduced and the nail is advanced to the proximal site. As both nails are inserted in the same direction, they can function as a joystick for final fracture reduction and fixation.
The advantages of the retrograde insertion technique for the ulna are as follows. Alternate advancement if the nail is possible, dependent on the fracture reduction. By using extraction pliers and the inserter, both nails can be manipulated simultaneously. The interosseous membrane can be spread by orientating the nail tips towards each other. This is important for a stable fixation and full function of the forearm in pronation and supination. The use of the Essin method maintains the normal pronation and supination after healing. A plaster cast is not indicated and is counterproductive in post-operative care as it can block the pronation and supination in an undesired position. Reduction and fixation of the radial neck fracture. The clinical case shows an 11-year-old patient with a radial neck fracture angulated 45 degrees, 21R-M-3.12. Preoperative planning includes closed reduction, use of 2.5 mm elastic nail, functional postoperative treatment, and no plaster cast applied. The postoperative x-rays show good alignment of the radial head and correct bone length. Five weeks postoperative fluoroscopy shows correct alignment and sport activities are permitted. Five months postoperative fluoroscopy shows full healing and the nail can be removed. The bone model simulates the periosteum, capsule and ligaments. The vascularity of the radial neck is through the intact radial structure. Clinically, an open reduction can lead to a high risk of destroying the remaining vascularity. In the bone model, as the periosteum is intact, it must be incised to reveal the radial neck fracture, taking care not to damage the lateral structures. Clinically, the radial head fragment has a cancellous bone structure, which can be easily penetrated by the nail tip. The bone model has a very hard structure, therefore five holes are prepared to manipulate the radial head by the nail tip. Due to its flexibility, the nail is suitable for closed reduction and fixation of the radial neck fracture. The nail diameter is determined as previously described. In this exercise, a 2.0 mm nail is used. In this technique, the nail is primarily used as a reduction device and secondly as an implant. The skin incision and nail entry point are identical to those described in the forearm technique. The nail is bent 5 to 7 cm at the nail tip site. This guarantees easy reduction and manipulation of the radial head and effective fixation of the radial neck fracture. Both Lister's tubercle and dorsal radio approaches can be used for radial neck fracture reduction and fixation. In this exercise, the Lister's tubercle approach will be demonstrated. The inserter for 10 is used to manually insert the radial nail with the nail tip at a right angle to the bone shaft. The nail is advanced up to the proximal metaphysis of the radius with oscillating movements. The nail tip is advanced across the fracture in the radial neck and orientated to the radial head. The nail is rotated through 180 degrees and the fracture is reduced and fixed. The inserter is now removed. A 
A plaster cast is not indicated and is counterproductive in post-operative care as it can block the pronation and supination in an undesired position. The use of the SIN method provides the normal pronation and supination after healing. Nail cutting, end cap insertion and implant removal must be performed as previously described. You should now be able to describe unstable forearm fracture patterns, address the major problems of malalignment in the forearm, identify which forearm fractures are appropriate for operative and non-operative management, recognize the advantages and disadvantages of the different entry points, describe both distal radial approaches for ESIN, and perform the steps of the ESIN technique for the radius and ulna.